Well, hello, everybody, again for the fourth time again today. I mean, I should have one more stream after this to, to set a new record, I guess. It, it will be five streams in one day. Again, I didn't even anticipate this. So much has happened. We have done. Oh, well, first of all, <laughs> welcome back to Raw Law Unfiltered, your favorite show on the internet with your favorite host, the DUI Guy Plus. Now, we have covered so much today. We've done Karen Reed in the morning. We have read the judge's order on Karen Reed. By the way, check that video out if you have not seen that yet. That is insanity, what that judge is doing. Judge Judge Beverly Canoni in, in Massachusetts, in Norfolk, Massachusetts. Oh, my God. My skin is crawling. Um, also, John and Lynette filed for a request for um, counsel. That video is up already. And they got denied. Oh, sorry, spoiler alert. But you, oof, the judge's language. You have to read the judge's language. And, of course... Now we're talking about the Delphi, Delphi. We're about to find out how to pronounce it, murders. Um, I have not been following this case for the simple reason that I, 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 I've heard about it. I know a little bit about it. And now uh, we have a the pleasure of introducing someone who has been on the stream yesterday. And I believe this might be his second time on this show, on my channel. Although we have been on other streams before. Uh, Nicholas Stero, how are you, Nick? Hi, hi, it's uh, 3 a.m. here. <laughs> he is Swedish, but don't hold it against him. No, no, don't. Please don't. Uh, I, I call him Gandalf. Enough people do that. <laughs> I, I, I call him European Gandalf. Oh, thank you. I've, I've heard worse. I heard, I mean, Best Buy Gandalf and stuff like that. And I, I still buy it. It's still Gandalf. I mean, it's a compliment, <laughs> is it not? Or yeah, am I just it a is. dick? <laughs> it's like pizza. I mean, even a cold pizza is still a pizza. So, Best by Gandalf, it's still Gandalf. I love you, Nick. <laughs> Nick, you're you're the best. Um, Skoll. Did I say that right? Laheim. Laheim. <laughs> Skoll is cheers in Swedish. He's been teaching me Swedish behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. O almost perfect. Almost perfect. Okay, I'll keep practicing. Um, yeah. So and... tell us. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> no. We uh, talked on the, the Twitter, uh, you are going traveling in August. Yes. And and so am I. On the exact <laughs> same date. We're literally like doing this. I'm doing going this. to Europe and you're going out of Europe. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to the States. On the exact date, Larry, Larry is going to uh, Northern Europe. So yeah, we are missing out. But... I don't know when you're going back, but I will be passing by Kentucky around the 18th of August. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm doing a road trip after uh, Missouri up to uh, Michigan. Really? Yeah, I am passing by. I'm going uh, Houston, South uh, US, up to Atlanta because of the Young Thug trial. Yeah. Then uh, I'm going up to Delphi. Oh, oh no! I won't be back yet. No, oh, we're coming back stay... on the twenty fifth. Oh no, my! Uh, I'm oh. traveling back on the twenty second or twenty third. Wow! Uh, and when are you leaving from Europe? Uh, six. Uh, we're we're six. flying on the seventh. Yeah. <laughs> what are the odds? The minute you leave, we're like, hey, Nick. <laughs> yeah, probably I'm probably each other landing, in the air. I'm landing when you're taking off. <laughs> yes, literally. <laughs> literally, you're landing when I'm taking off. That is crazy. Yeah. Wow. We, we keep missing each other. I mean, you were in Europe mm. and we couldn't find the time. And now you're in Europe again. And now I literally can't find the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man and you're gonna be in my neighborhood and i'm gonna miss it oh man yeah no luck no luck this no luck. year maybe maybe we'll figure something out some other time because we'll be back yeah. so so <clears throat> fingers crossed okay mm -hmm. my girlfriend who has a name her name mm -hmm. is chandler say her yep. name her chandler. name is chandler remington her name is chandler Rem. Fight Club? Do you remember the, the scene when, when... Have you seen Fight Club? Oh, well, that was a long time ago. Uh, it's when Robert Paulson gets uh, killed. And, you know, they, they deprive them of all their names because you're not individuals. You're, you're not a snowflake. Oh. You're not special. And then yeah. his body is like, oh, upon death, you do have a name. 
His name is Robert Paulson, and they all start chanting. And, and anyway, it's a scene from from okay. a okay. phenomenal film. It doesn't matter. Um, so Chandler and I are going to be back for a Balkans tour, hopefully in April okay. or May next year. So in a oh. year and a month from now. Okay. So right around my birthday, you will be in my neighborhood. Yeah, we can. Yeah. When's your birthday? Uh, uh, early May. Do you not do uh, do you not announce it? Is it a secret? No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it it's quite easy to check uh, check check it, but I mean, I did the mistake of actually of using my real name <laughs> when I started this thing. I I've done that. I mean, I've been on the internet since the nineties and stuff, and I've always used my own name, and apparently that's not a good idea. Uh, you get a lot of interesting phone calls and mails and stuff like that, but yeah, I I'm a junior rep. Ah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, so uh, but now it, so it is easy. But I kind of want to keep something. But I do have a birthday stream in tenth uh, of May. Tenth of May, okay. Because I'm also a Taurus. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Joint birthday party? <laughs> no, Let's do it. That would be freaking awesome. I think that'd be really. I mean, fun. I can take I can take a ferry to the Balkans. I mean, oh, a ferry birthday party. Okay, that sounds Fra a little phrasing. Hold on. Oh, phrasing. phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nick, stop it! Stop it, Nick! No. You, you don't want you don't want to go there. Oh my god, we get it. We have so much fun together. Oh my god, my nipples are getting the, hard. The moment I said it, and I thought, oh no, <laughs> it's the way you pronounce it. It's not. It's not fairy. It's fairy. You got. You got. You got fairy. It's a fairy. You just. You have to be really like quick with it. It's like we're gonna take a fairy. Because if you say fairy. we're gonna take a fairy, here's the thing. If I say <laughs> fairy fast, it sounds like furry. And then it becomes even weirder. <laughs> okay, all right, we're going to the... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to AEG and Stephanie and George Faust. If I click on it, come on. My some, this thing sometimes glitches. George Faust and Jill Maudi and Carolyn Russell and Stacy P. Thank you for joining on as members to the channel. All six of you are lovely and amazing. Thank you. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe not just to this channel, subscribe to this guy. This furry beast has a channel too. Can you believe it? Nicholas Stero, he's amazing. The content he creates, he has been following day for day the young thug Rico trial. Is that in New York? Uh, Georgia, Georgia, yeah. the, the Rico trial, the Young Thug Rico trial. If you don't know anything about it, and and you want to learn more, go to his channel. It, yeah, he has like at this point what hundreds, if not thousands, of hours on that trial. Oh, I started covering that trial in May of last year, so I'm that's coming thousands. up to that's definitely thousands. Yeah, and I have I think over a hundred streams on it. Wow! And each stream is yeah. how long? Between two and eight hours. So somewhere around hundreds, definitely hundreds, yeah, hundreds yeah. and hundreds of hours. That's crazy, yeah. man. Um, yeah. I, so I will do a recap of sorts, come up to speed kind of uh, stream eventually uh, when I have time. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. I, I, we we would we can't wait. I I wait with bated breath because I have not followed it at all. Let's talk about what we're here for. Yeah. Um, yeah. is it Delphi Delphi? As I understand, it's Delphi. Delphi. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mo in the deep Indiana. end. Yeah. De Delphi, Indiana. Mo in the deep end is local. She lives just 45 minutes uh, north. And she knows more about the backstory because she lived through it. Uh, the from I mean, Abby and Libby uh, were found early in the morning, gruesomely. Uh, murdered and I don't say that easily I mean I've been doing labor law for over 30 years I've seen most work related injuries this is gruesome uh, this was in 2017 on a crisp 
I have uh, <laughs> first um, a crisp, I do want to say February morning uh, in Indiana. They were found. And of course, uh, immediately murder investigation started. And within days, they presented a phantom sketch. This is a person of interest. And uh, let me show you that one. This was the person of interest. This is very early on. They asked for information about this guy. Mm -hmm. And they conducted a lot of interviews. They reached out to the community. We need more information of course, and uh, witnesses at the time gladly shared because this is a small community. Whoever was around that day, that day uh, close to that bridge, shared what they knew. Of course, because mm -hmm. that's what you do. And uh, then it was silent for a bit. And then uh, Some time later, they shared, the cops shared this. Uh, I will don't, I will not have the sound on because cop, uh, yeah. Wait, wait, hold on. Just real quick. Do I need a, um, uh, what is it called? Um, the, the warning. What is that called? The no, warning no, graphic uh, content. No, uh, I will not show the, the, the graphic. Uh, it's not released. It, it, it has been leaked, but it's not released. And I refuse. I have seen it, but I refuse to share it in any okay. way, shape or form because it's so disrespectful. Mm -hmm. This, what you see here, is what the cops called a video that was uh, taken from one of the victim's phones. Let's see here. Is there audio? There is, but I want to wait with that because there's something okay. about this I need to do. Because, as it seems, so this is the rendering. Sorry, you're not this supposed to so see creepy. that yet. Okay. Yeah. This was later found out. This is rendering of photos taken from uh, one of the phones. So mm -hmm. what they did was probably this hasn't been presented in court. So take it with a grain of salt. Unless it has been presented in court, it's it's not actual evidence. But from the information I've gathered, it's a series of photos. So what one of the girls probably did was do uh, with the phone one of these. Hold in the picture button and it takes a series of photos. Mm -hmm. And that they made into this. And uh, that was all for a good while. Then months later, they released audio with this. And uh, let's see here if it's on this actually. Guys. So. Guys. What can be construed as guys down the hill or down the hill guys. A later rendition of that audio says something about gun. Here's the caveat with this. These pictures and that audio is not taken together. The, the investigators put it together in hopes to, with the sound and the video or a series of pictures make it easier to somehow uh, identify who this is mm -hmm. but it's actually taking a part and that has been a bit of a contestant contest contested online because there are a lot of people claiming oh she shot the video you can hear him say things no these are separate Mm -hmm. This is just how the cops try to help us identify this person of interest. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, this was in because if you see this uh, let's go like this and hold on where is it there yeah I mean it's maybe I don't know here mm -hmm. here's the thing with uh, man with goatee in these clothes in uh, Indiana that's all of them I mean more or less every adult male in Delphi Indiana dresses more like less like this so it's very generic mm -hmm. at the time with the uh, testimony they believed the guy was on or a bit taller than six feet mm -hmm. at the time then it was radio silence from the cops for almost two years mm -hmm. which in my opinion that's usually, a long time yeah but it's also kind of a good thing because then in one, on one end it's a good thing because you don't if you don't release information the information you re receive you can uh, uh, skim through to see okay what is actual good information but then two years later they uh, uh, the investigators said that we are no longer looking for this guy we are looking for this guy wow that's a huge difference yeah and this at the time around 2019 stirred up a lot of wait wait what we have been looking for the other guy for two years mm -hmm. who's this guy mm -hmm. and no information of value showed up about this guy whatsoever even though witnesses at the time described these here's the thing with these two the sketch artist produced both of them in 2017. For some odd reason, they didn't release both of them. We are looking for these people of interest. They released first this one, mm -hmm. and then two years later, this one, even though they were produced by the same sketch artist at the same time after witnesses. For so, uh, well, I saw this guy that looks suspicious. I saw that guy looks suspicious. Not uncommon. Mm -hmm. Not uncommon. But to release it two years apart, that's mm -hmm. a bit odd, in my opinion. And still, with this video, I'm not sure I see the resemblance, but okay. Now, we have to jump forward in time because uh, during that time, the FBI joined uh, the investigation a month after and then left uh, a number of months later at the request because FBI costs, apparently they cost money to get in and stuff like that. So they asked, no, it's growing cold. See you later. That was the information we got at the, they got at the time, at least. Mm -hmm and uh, so then again more or less radio silent besides a few off tracks about a, a guy an internet profile that was contacting one of the girls uh in 2016 2017 but that guy was written off it was a fake internet profile and they never released the name of that guy and uh, but completely no not him and then in 20 let's see here in 20 let's see here when the, uh, richard allen was arrested in i had the date up here i had the date i had the date i promise you i had the date in ah It's okay, man. Take your time. In, uh, in uh, 2022, they arrest Richard Allen, mm -hmm. which is this guy. Now, 
he bears some resemblance to the first sketch who a few years earlier the inv same investigator said we are no longer interested in this guy. i remember when that story broke i was either on my way or i was in california and people were talking about this i remember this go ahead sorry mm -hmm. no 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 worries if you have questions just cut me off no mm -hmm. they arrest richard allen and uh, according to the investigators they have a very good uh, evidentiary situation and uh, the judge at the time, uh, his one and only decision was that uh, we can't hold Mr. Allen in the county jail. It's too unsafe. So I will write the order to put him in a maximum security prison. Which double edged is, sword? Yeah, because is it safer there in and, and in a local jail? Maybe. Is it safe? And how does it do with his due process rights with access to lawyer? Because maximum security prisons do not have these uh, uh, rooms where he can speak freely with his lawyers. And well, more or less uh, what happened is the investigation, I mean, they had a probable cause affidavit, they searched his home. And uh, there they found, as in most Indiana homes, a gun and knives. Not uncommon. It's Indiana. But it, yeah. Uh, the gun was a Sig Sauer 9mm. One of the most common guns out there. And the claim at the time, and still is, is that a bullet that was found at the crime scene was cycled as not uh, a, a complete bullet, not just uh, the casing or the slug, the, the entire thing. Was they claim, was the investigators claimed it was cycled through his gun, said the uh, tool mark guy. Now, I don't ha think I have to say to many people my thoughts about tool mark guy, the tool mark guys, it's not a proper science, it is a crap science. It at best can not exclude, in my opinion. But that's besides the point. That was the evidentiary. Okay, now they can tie him to uh, the thing they claim. Now, in... I want to say August of 2023, the infamous Frank's memo. A 138-page memo a frank's memo is an evidentiary kind of we want a frank's hearing about this evidence that we have gathered through discovery from the defense attorneys and the hence odinists and as it turns out fbi who joined the investigation a month after were on the trail of this might be have some religious kind of thing to it way back then because um, how the crime scene was arranged because they weren't found they weren't found at the place they were killed hmm. so somehow they were killed and then put on the place they were discovered because moved, moved yeah uh, because there was basically zero blood on the scene they were found. They found blood on a tree nearby with some resemblance of uh, old Nordic rule. We don't know yet because I've seen the picture and you can see where it goes, but you have to actually show light to it to really know what is is it just a handprint? Is it somebody writing something in blood? We don't know until we actually get the photos from that time. Wow. The With actually blacklight things. We don't yeah. know. And they were covered in a few sticks and branches. Those sticks and branches also bears some resemblance to old Nordic runes. 
Now, uh, there's a few people. Oh, all sticks thrown on people look like runes. No, they don't. Nordic runes are quite specific. They just don't land that way by accident. And uh, there is a diagram out there, and which I obviously can't find right now <laughs> before this, but it does bear strong resemblance. And then we find out that within the first five days, two of the first people of interest in this case were both local members of the Odin Brotherhood. I found it, by the way, if you want oh. to yep. switch just for a second. Now, warning, this it's, it's not it's not graphic graphic, um, but it is a visual representation of you know the bodies as they were found laying. It's it's just a drawing. It's not a photo mm. or anything crazy. So uh, don't panic, chat. But I just want to give that warning. Mm. If if this these sorts of things trigger you, uh, you may want to look away for the next minute or so. Does that look right? Yeah. And uh, what are we looking at? Uh, for Abby, she is placed that way, and. Uh, what you see, I'm trying to point at my screen here. Uh, that is, I will see if I can. Uh, let's see here, so I can find it for you. And these are sticks that were found in on this conglomeration. Yeah. On yeah. Top and now it. look at uh, the sticks on Abby, and then look down here at serpent. Ser serpent. Yeah. Serpent. Where is um, it? Which? Uh, oh, down at the bottom. Okay, the, the third the, one the, from the left on the last row. Yeah. Can you zoom in on that one in particular? Uh, these are Nordic runes. Oh, apparently. Hold on. Sorry. If you hold control and yeah, there you go. I think maybe, maybe not. It's okay. No. Yeah. Serpent Nordic oh. rune. Serpent Nordic oh. rune. Here we go. I, I got it. Mm. So it looks like this. This is a, a larger uh, mm. representation of it. This is what it looks like. Share this tab mm. instead. This one right here. That, that rune. That rune. Uh huh. Mm. And in uh, Old Nordic, uh, this is used, but was used by, you could call it shaman of sorts in uh, rune magic sorts in the Old Norse uh, religion. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of important. And it's really hard to throw sticks that lands exactly like that. And then if you go back to the diagram on Ab uh, Abby and Libby, these three, these two uh, extra on top there, the sticks don't land that way on accident. Now, Libby's is a bit, uh, let's see here, so I can, Compare it more thoroughly. I have to check here. Uh, might be some kind of upside down chalice. Mm -hmm. uh, that is more unclear. But mm -hmm. uh, the, there might be a reason for that because one of the girls is way more uh, savagely. And the other seems to be almost collateral. Mm -hmm. That's my interpretation of it. Don't take my word for it. We haven't seen the trial yet. We don't know the evidence. And that is why there, there so one, two of the first people 
who were interviewed, local Odinists. And when I say Odinists, I mean uh, diaper Nazis, because they do not confess to old Nordic Aesir faith. They confess to a bastardization created in the 90s by a guy called Mark Marabello, who claims to have uh, met with uh, the old Nordic god. Uh... Oh, I know this. Sorry. Uh... What, what, whatever it is, the old Nordic god for justice and peace. Hold on. It's 3 a.m. Uh, or 3.30 a.m. My brain isn't functioning yet. But that guy claims he met in England, of course, with this old Nordic uh, god, who is very little known about. And... Uh, then he created a completely new rendition, which white supremacist kind of, oh, that looks cool. Let's confess to it. Let's call ourselves Vikings. No, you're not. You're diaper Nazis. This is Viking. You are not. And, I, and when I say that, I've traced my ancestry back to the 13th century. This is a thousand years of Scandinavian inbreeding. <laughs> We're looking at it. Yeah. And these guys, nothing. <clears throat> now, after the big reveal in the Frank's memo, thank you, Sheila. Fossetti is his name. And uh, the, Fossetti, is, he made his judgment with an axe. He sat on his chair and he made judgment in peacetime. When he, uh, uh, this is my judgment, he banged with the blunt end. If people didn't follow his judgment, he turned the sharp end. And uh, there's a theory out there. Here is where bang the gavel comes from. Mm -hmm. In the interesting, in the very curious. Section. Yeah. But uh, so that is a bit of a sidetrack. Uh, sorry. Now, but these Odinists are now they are quite dangerous. There, after a bit of research, there are a few murders in the United States where this cult has been attributed to and convicted mm -hmm. of. So it's not like it's unheard of that this Odinist cult does really bad things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, if you sample, if you guys are out there, Google Odinist Brotherhood crimes. You will you you will find some disturbing stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so, as Mo said, oh please, no, not not bad man, bear, pig, not conspiracy theory. But all of a sudden, when you add things together, I can see the theory. Not the theory as of guilt of these two uh, person of interest, but it is a theory about uh, can you really reach beyond reasonable doubt with all right. this information? Here comes the thing that is from a constitutional standpoint is quite disturbing with this case. They were assigned a woman named uh, a female judge Judge Gull. Mm -hmm. And uh, his lawyers, uh, Mr. Allen's lawyers, has said, L we can't really talk to Mr. Allen in this maximum security prison. First mm -hmm. of all, from his arrest to one of the first hearings in uh, le uh, early 2024, he, I mean, he's five foot four. He weighed when he was incarcerated around 200 to 20, so it was quite spherical. He lost, he weighed 115 pounds. He lost 90 pounds of weight. Holy shit, months. that's half of his body weight. Yeah. Oh, I skipped the professor. Oh, sorry. Thank you, it's Trenton. I love the chat because they catch on to this. Yeah. 
there was a professor at the time who was interviewed. He was a professor uh, in uh, uh, old North G Germanic uh, folklore and religion and stuff like that. He was interviewed by the investigators and by uh, FBI. Interesting. And he believes, apparently, that this crime scene and what's going on with it shows clear signs of this. Either somebody who is or somebody who is Im impersonating someone uh, with uh, some kind of this. Now, the investigators in... Now, let's go into the real disturbing stuff here. And uh, I know crime scene. I know there's no disrespect, but from a constitutional point of view. Then we find out quite recently that the investigators lost the first 70 days of interviews and they don't have notes on who they interviewed and when. This was discovered just about a few weeks ago. And, wow. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. 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 And what does Judge Gall do with this information? Well, of course, the defense does what, do what they can do. We don't know if it's exculpatory in this information, but you have to assume there's exculpatory. But the investigators lost it. Intentional, oh unintentional, doesn't matter. Nope. And she says missing no, is missing without, is missing. No, no without a hearing. Because they couldn't, the defense couldn't prove there was exculpatory uh, evidence in those 70 days. Well, of course they can't. It's gone. How do you The investigators her? lost. Well, according, I heard, I've heard uh, two stories. One is that at the time, back in 2017, when they started doing the interviews, mm -hmm. somehow they left uh, the camera rolling. And it started overwriting itself <laughs> oh that means it's completely unrecoverable yeah that's the one story and uh, they discovered it in september of 2017 they didn't disclose it now, another the question defense is do you believe that until Sorry. late yeah. 2023 in October or September, September, October 2023. That's when they revealed it to the defense. <laughs> how, how long did they sit on that information again? Uh, five years. <laughs> five and a half years. Well, years. how long has he been incarcerated with them knowing that they the, those interviews are missing? Uh, about a year. About a year. About a yeah. fucking year he's sitting. At, wow. What's his yeah. bond set at? Do you know? No bond. No bond. Unconstitutional again, uh, Eighth Amendment. Uh, excuse, yeah, Eighth Amendment. I would yeah. argue. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of people out there who believes his guilt. I don't blame you. I mean, I really don't because I don't know anything. There is, yeah, there is information from the investigators. Re remind you, the same investigators who lost seventy days of uh, evidence, who says he confessed to his girlfriend four times and his mother one time. Here's the thing. Now, are those interviews still around, or are they missing? Those they, they, no, uh, no. These are prison calls to his uh, ah. wife and to his mother. Okay. Here's the thing with confessions. At the time, this is the same time that he lost ninety pounds of weight in just a few months. We don't know the content of the, these calls, right? At all. And as any defense lawyer or even prosecutor can tell you, false confessions are a dime a dozen sure we simply don't know so yeah under duress as uh they claim yeah as you can claim under duress because and he, i'm going i'm skipping because now i'm coming to in the first uh, maximum security he, well, he has been moved from the first maximum security prison which was an hour away from delphi so which causes problem for the defense attorneys then he was moved to a different one who is an additional hour away, making it even harder 
for the defense attorneys to get to him, which is mind blowing to me. But this is the judge decision. And I'll, I'll, hold on, chat. I know what you're what you're waiting for. I will get to it. I will get to it. The Odin prison uh, guards. The Go Odin ahead. is prison guard. Yeah, he was assigned a guy who had on his prison guard uniform in Odin we trust. I just Odin think, I Brotherhood just patches. Wow. This is oh. un, during the same time these confessions are supposed to have happened. Oh, this, uh, according to the defense lawyers, we have to remind, according to the defense lawyers, this prison guard tried to eavesdrop when they had meetings with their client. He tried to record them when they, yeah. No. Yeah, and as I said, yeah, there is two owning guards, but I believe only one of them was assigned to him. No. But again, don't secretly recording a conversation allegedly by a prison guard of the defense talking to their client about their yeah. case? Yeah. No. According to the defense lawyers. Defense lawyers. Let's talk defense lawyers. In November, October, November, there was a leak. Last year? Of, last year? Last year. There was a leak of the crime scene photos and everybody blamed, blamed the defense because they had it and it was from their office. Problem is the person who leaked it was an associate, not a, he didn't work there. He was an associate. He had used to work there. He, they had took, taken him uh, to consult on the Frank's memo, I believe. He went into the conference room and took pictures of the evidence and send it to somebody else. So the defense lawyers wasn't really aware of this because he did it without their knowledge. Despite that, Judge Gull disqualifies them without a hearing. What? Wait, 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 wait. She disqualifies them, why? Gross negligent misconduct of doing what the leaking false, of the informa fal false information in a frank's memo <laughs> leaking of the information and all around bad guys i assume it is extremely dubious and this is what she has done all the time refused fundamental basic due process rights to Mr. Allen. And Mr. Allen wrote to the judge, I want to keep my lawyers. And despite that, she disqualifies them without a hearing. She holds, she put, uh, calls them into a meeting in chambers with the state uh, prosecutor, where she gives them the option, either you remove yourselves, or we will have this hearing where I will tear you a new one. By the way, that's the only hearing she allowed cameras in, in all this time. That one hearing, she wanted cameras for the sole purpose, in my opinion, to, th uh, yeah, to render them out. When was this so, hearing without a hearing? When did that happen? That was in, I want to say November. Okay, so just four months ago, five months ago. Yeah, and of course, and then she, what she does is she immediately appoints two new new lawyers. Uh -huh. One of the lawyers uh, have already been on TV discussing the case, saying that uh, evidence seems troublesome to Mr. Allen. She appoints him. The other one, she's uh, Facebook friends with. Well, now, I mean, I'm friends I, with I mean, that judges. happens. That happens. Yeah, but, it, not... but in the circumstances, it's, it's odd. Sure. These sure. guys visit Mr. Allen in prison, goes through the evidence on, in a very short amount of time. What's up, MLS? And they agree with the previous lawyers. Mm -hmm. Her own appointed lawyers agreed with the previous lo lawyers. 
that okay so now we have two sets of lawyers who agrees on the frank's memo on the odinist theory two sets of lawyers then uh, mr allen appeals to the indiana supreme court to have his original lawyers reinstated mm -hmm. and with uh six to three votes they reinstate his lawyers saying judge gull you did a boo-boo now they also sought to disqualify her that didn't go through that i mean that rarely happens but that should have told judge gull okay time to maybe re-evaluate uh, maybe maybe no she doubles down she denies hearing uh, of the motion of the motion for the defense. She allowed the latest I saw. She allowed without hearing the disclosure of Mr. Allen's medical and mental health records. Without a hearing, Indiana rules states you have to have a specific hearing to release someone's medical and especially med mental health records. Sure. And this is the state who wants it because they want to, and this has to do with the alleged confessions. What state of mind was he in during these confessions? Correct. And, and this, I've we are 45 minutes in, and I barely skimmed the surface of this. <laughs> I mean, there is so much this Judge Gull has done. I call her Judge Gull because I think that's more appropriate. She's fundamentally wrong. And I can't point to specific, but I can't find maybe one out of 20 decisions in this case. I find a legal basis for. Uh-huh. And it's mind dropping. And now we are way beyond if is Richard Allen guilty or not. I don't know. He might be. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. because we are talking about his due process rights, his constitutional Correct. rights. The state does not have constitutional rights in a trial. No. The defense has. Yes. But apparently this judge who has only been a prosecutor and then a judge does not believe in that she believes that the state had the rights apparently because it sounds no like other... the judge in the massachusetts case uh beverly canoni yeah, yeah. and uh and maybe a bit in the young thug case and i mean this... fanny well uh, no that's yeah, not fanny... the judge sorry that's the prosecutor but anyway that's continue. A, sorry. Yeah. and or would maybe there might be enough evidence to see that yeah mr allen probably did it here's the thing folks probably isn't good enough it's not beyond a reasonable doubt mm. probably yeah. means not guilty yeah and i will show you one more thing here this is the probable cause affidavit i will just read a single line from it I guess this is the, the the one positive thing about this whole thing, Nick, is we're never going to run out of content. There's just corruption. <laughs> no, because uh, I will just try to find that specific because I have the probable. I will send the entirety to you. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Darn it, I have to make it a bit bigger. I hope. While you're doing that, I'm going to shout out DigiStorm Digital. Thank you for joining on as a member. Same goes for Mindy Hernandez and Elizabeth Moody and Carolyn Lively, as well as R. Lee Hill and Lead with Love. And also, wow, Lead with Love. Thank you for the 10, 10 gifted memberships. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, Shout out in the chat if you got a, a gifted membership from Lead with Love. Shout out in the chat. Um, 
that is very generous of you. Thank you so much. Also, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Nicholas Stero, uh, Swedish Gandalf. I love this guy. And he's, and he's coming, <laughs> dropping all the knowledge on you guys. It, it's only fair you just go to subscribe to his channel. I mean, it's it's only fair. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I have the line up. Am I river? No, I have the line up here. And and if you have questions, a, but, this, yeah. yeah, this is a part of the probable cause affidavit that let the investigators search Mr. Allen's home. And I want to show you this. This is by several witnesses identifying vehicles they attribute to Mr. Allen. Investigators note witness described the vehicle parked at the former CPS building as a PT Cruiser or a small SUV or a smart car. Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, oh, investigators believe those descriptions are similar in nature to a 2016 Ford Focus. I'm face palming so hard right now, Nick. And I don't want to be rude, misogynistic, or anything, but if you are a male cop making this assumption about cars, you might need a rainbow flag because you don't know shit about cars. First of all, smart car? Yeah. I mean, first of all, PT Cruiser. PT Cruiser? The, the ugliest Small car SUV? Or a smart car. A smart, smart car, car is five smart car is five feet long. Yeah. A, a PT Cruiser is the ugliest car ever built, in my yep. opinion. Sorry uh, I, for I'll, you. I'll agree. Send, PT Cruiser lovers, send your hate to me. Uh, small SUV. A 2016 Ford Focus. Let's see. A smart car or an SUV? What the f Yeah. Here. Bum, bum, bum. I love the chat. They're like, can't the government step in? You're so optimistic. The government is the one doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're already mm -hmm. stepped in. They already messed it up enough. No, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm teasing, of course. I'm teasing, but that's freaking wild. Hold on here while I look for it. Yeah, I'm going to read this super chat. Um, did this judge work in Florida before, says RJ Medic. That's that's an allegory <laughs> to Judge Thomasist. Thank you, RJ Medic. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for your generosity. Yeah, you want more government? Here it is. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, he had a black 2016 Ford Focus. Um. Somebody said, Nick, uh, don't forget to tell him what car Betsy Blair said it was. I don't know what that means, but. Oh, I don't remember. Sluthy, uh, post it. I'm guessing mm -hmm. this is one of your posse in my, in my chat mm -hmm. that follow the yeah. Delphi. Delphi. <laughs> Sluthy has been me around me for a long time. Awesome. This... Awesome. Yeah. I'm showing you a similar car. This is a black Ford Focus 2016. Okay. And and this is a smart car. I can't tell the difference. It looks like the no, same the, thing. The, yeah. I mean, ignore the thing. If you open <laughs> the trunk and put a handle on it, it's a berry picker. And you park it by putting it on your back. I mean... I can probably pick this car up with my right hand. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. And again, I will read this line again. Investigators note... Witnesses describe the vehicle parked at the CPS building as a PT Cruiser, a small SUV, or a smart car. It's... Investigators believe those descriptions are similar in nature to a 2016 Ford Focus. 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, there has been other confessions. You, uh, you have Elvis Fields confession. You have several other confessions already in this uh, area. Now That's I do what think El just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do believe that uh, this one was disregarded quite quickly because he wasn't around at the moment. I mean, and the, again, I will send you the probable cause if they, uh, You do? Mm -hmm. Do you know who Jennifer Coffin Daffer is? Mm -mm, no. Uh, she's a retired FBI agent who believes Karen Reed is guilty. She's extremely pro uh, state. Mm -hmm. She has made two videos on the Delphi case and thinks this is nonsense. Wow. Yeah. Jennifer Coffin Daffer. I know uh, there's a good bunch of you out there who knows who she is and really don't like her. Mm -hmm. She, the most pro state person I've seen thinks this case is nonsense. Hmm. Curious. And all of it, yeah. And when one of the most... Chad is saying, Larry, you are better for not knowing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you react... If you watched her stuff, it's like me reacting to Nancy Grace's lust. Yeah. <laughs> now, I do speak with her on occasions via Twitter. We... Uh, she knows my stance on the Karen Reed case. I know her stance. We don't discuss it. But sure, fair. Delphi case, we have a common ground at least. So yeah. So when even when she says this is nonsense, I mean, and yeah. Again, that's crazy. I, we are almost an hour in, and I just skimmed this off. Me and Mo have nine or ten episodes, two hours long on this and uh, we go a, a bit deeper on that go check it out go check out his channel with him and mo that's yeah so this is your mm. cue because we're gonna wrap this up in a couple minutes here mm. um i want to keep this yeah. video sub two hours so can you give us the final like 120 second what are we looking at in may oh in may well judge gall ghoul whatever's have decided that the trial will start may 13. There are no electronics allowed, no media electronics allowed. You're only allowed pen and paper. Audio might be recorded and released either at the end of the week or at the end of the trial. Fuck. Yeah. So when does it nothing. start? May 13th? May 13th. 13th. She's ordered six days a week. It will end May 31st at the latest. She's ordered during labor weekend to have the trial three weeks three fucking weeks mm. three days of uh, jury selection and the rest is uh, trial days that's so the karen reed is going to be in full swing by that point because i think people are saying karen mm. reed is going to take about three weeks that's the week of the 16th or the 15th it starts on the 16th then the mm. 23rd the 30th that's week three week mm. four it'll be like coming to a close so right as the karen reed case is coming to a close nick listen i wanted to thank you so much for coming on my channel and sharing this this is wild and i know we just scratched the surface if you guys want more because i know you're hungry for more go to this guy's channel Oops. subscribe like his videos watch them he's got this with mo on the deep end i need to have mo on this channel one day yeah I know that yeah she's yeah you do she's the in this. funniest girl and she's local. She knows more about this case than I will ever know because she's local. She lived through this. I mean, so she has a lot of information. That, and, um, and she has, yeah. <laughs> and Megan told me to go check her out too. So I love you, yeah. man. Thank you for joining. I will be um, signing off here with Nick. Uh, go subscribe to his channel. Go like his videos. Go watch if you want more on the 100 videos. Of, or no, sorry. That's that's the Rico case. That's no, a no, young no. thug uh, but, case. But you still have plenty of content on the Delphi murders. Oh, I'm... Um, and yeah, I'm going to be... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be meeting the what the hails. We're flying tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be seeing ZZ Top in concert. Leonard Skinner. Super exciting stuff. Nick, I love oh. you. It sucks. That <laughs> we're gonna, I'm going to miss you in, in Europe. But uh, at least I get to meet what the hails tomorrow. Uh, mm. and it's Saturday, Sunday, so that's going to be fun. But um, I'm signing off, Nick. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing. And I will see you and the chat next time. Oh, Bye, wait, 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 yes, wait, yes, wait, wait, yes, wait, wait, yes, yes. Tomorrow, I forgot about this. Sorry, yes, George Gold denied defense fund for experts, and they started 
a fundraiser for the uh, for defense experts. Yeah, she actually denied funding. I'm doing I a have... fundraiser tomorrow. <laughs> fundraiser tomorrow. Go to next channel. Bye, everybody. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>